Hey guys, I was gonna make a quick video. I say quick, I never make a quick video. Um, on a little project I decided to do, and uh, uh, it's it's making a sort of similar to a Pactena, a DIY Pactena. And uh, I've, uh, I've liked the Pactenas. Um, you see them on several channels. Uh, my good friend uh, Tom over on Anything with Wills. Cam radio call sign November 9 Yankee Oscar has one and he's used it a lot and had a lot of success with it but I just didn't want to spend the money for another yet another wire antenna when I, I've got so many of them and I can make them so I already had a, a 9 to 1 un, -un and this is what the pac uses and the pac has uh, it's got like a uh, an X shaped uh, metal bit now it's very nice it's nice it's like it's very well made machined aluminum it's got connectors um, uh, miniature banana connectors on the on the board itself and uh, so you can connect different directions and make it and use different um, formats for the antenna and this one um, if I can get it open here so this one um, has the 9 to 1 un -un right inside as you can see and uh, it's very well made. The guy did a good job. I think it's 20 bucks I paid for this. And, um, you know, I know I could have made it a lot cheaper, but I really didn't want to have to order all these different parts. It's got a BNC connector on the bottom. Uh, it's got a connector for a counterpoise and a connection for your uh, radiating element. And um, inside, he even wrote that it is a 9 to 1 un -un. And that's this call sign Kilo Kilo 4 Yankee Mike India. And um, 9 to 1 is rated for 20 watts, which is perfect for QRP portable type stuff. And um, so I decided, I did some sketching, and I'm not an artist. I got some graph paper, and man, my little design looks like some little alien dude. Um, this is the um, template, finally. I cut out a cardboard template for it. I think I'm zoomed in just a little too much. Let me back out. So my idea is to cut, I got a piece of uh, plastic right here. I think this is about an eighth inch. I think it's ABS. And uh, my, yeah, so I cut this template out. It's gonna be shaped like this. And my idea is I'm gonna epoxy this to that plastic, just like that. So I can get to the connector, the BNC connector. I can get to this uh, radiating, radiating element and to the counterpoise. And um, I also have a trail friendly, an LNR trail friendly antenna, which is a 10, 20, 40 meter antenna. And um, they, it's, it's in an X shape like this, just this top part. And, and it's got some other things on it, but um, it, it, this is cut this way so you can wrap the um, radiator in a figure eight so it doesn't get um, twisted. And um, I can still get to this and I can still get the, uh, to the BNC connector as well. And I got some good epoxy. I think I can get that epoxy to that plastic really easily. And I was going to put like a quarter inch hole here and a quarter inch hole here for tie offs. I could put a quarter inch hole here and here for a tie off. And I was going to put uh, uh, three small holes. I bought some really small wire. Some uh, I think it's 24 gauge wire. and uh, Or 26. I think it's 26 gauge. Really, It's really, really thin. And um, I could put three holes down through here and I can weave the radiator element through there and connect it here and that'll provide some serious strain relief and I won't have to um, worry about it pulling it off the connector and I could do the same thing for the counterpoise and with the antenna I figure I could wrap it around up here in a figure eight and if I use a counterpoise I can wrap it around one side of this or I could also wrap it up around all there either way so that's my project and um, I'm gonna get started here I've already traced the template on um, this piece of plastic and I'm going to use my wife's scroll saw to hopefully um, cut it out and get started um, with finishing it up a little bit so let me go it's hard to see what I sketched on here so I might have to hover over this Well, I kind of screwed that little tip up right there, but yeah, I kind of got this a little close, but it's okay. Most of the wire is going to be up here, um, and if it doesn't hold the wire, I'll redo it. So now I'll just get some uh, a wrench and clean up these edges real quick. So I normally 
have a cheap little flat metal wrench that I use specifically for this kind of stuff. All right, so this little flat, I don't even know what it goes to. It probably came with some piece of furniture. And I just rub the edge up it like that. And it gets those little shavings right off of there. And it also gets, it's not, a, it's not quite a deburring tool, but it's, um, it'll do pretty good. Get the sharp edges off. Just want to clean it up a little bit. So I kind of messed this leg up right here and uh, kind of like got in a weird shape right in there but that, that scroll saw is hard to control if you never use one and this is probably not the top of the line it means it does uh, it's good for craft projects and things like this uh, so I don't think that's going to be a problem and I don't think this is going to be a problem uh, my project box with my unun in it so basically, I'll probably scuff this up a little bit, but it's going to go just like that. And that does not look exactly right, but yeah, it's not pretty. Not at all. But it's not about looks, it's about functionality. As long as I can get in there and put a BNC connector on and get to these connectors and get some strain relief going this way and this way. I should be golden. And so let me get started with the strain relief, I think. I don't know what size holes to drill, so it's pretty small ones. I'll tell you that. A quarter inch will be more than enough. And I realize since this is so off-centered anyway, I think I'm just going to eyeball the center of this. Well, that wood split pretty good, didn't it? And then I will eyeball, try to get it close to this side as well. All right, well I got that hole. And I might put one up here in the middle of this. Now this way I can put a bungee or a rope and tie it off and or, or up here as well depends on what I'm doing got those done I have some smaller holes to drill for the um, strainer really for the radiating element and the counterpoise and I mean those that is some small gauge too so I think this is a sixteenth of an inch drill bit this is going to sit like that so I want the strain relief to come on here here and probably here so I'll eyeball that too like I said, I'm not trying to be perfect with this, so. Put one there. And put another one here. And I put the other one way down here. Alright. And I'll repeat that for the other side. Now this is some wire I got from soda beams. So you basically just... Run the wire, you basically just run the wire through here, then you run it through this one, then you run it through this one, like so. And then this is not going to pull that wire out of there, it just isn't. And then when you have the uh, the unun on here, you have whatever connector you want to use. I might just strip the wire and tin it. And because um, it's not going to be coming on and off, and as you can see, this uh, unit has it has a hole right there that I can run the the tinned wire through and crimp it, or I might just put a, a circle ring connector on there and uh, make it a little bit more permanent. We'll see. So yeah, I think that'll work just fine um, for the strain relief, and uh, it may not be pretty, but I think it's going to work out. And so now I'm going to. Probably sand this a little bit and scuff it up pretty good and um, see if I can get the epoxy to stick. So, I'm going to give it a, a brushed finish as well. These, these little sanding sponges come in so handy. I, I, I think I got a bunch of these, a pack of these at Ollie's or somewhere on the cheap, you know. I'll spray it off with my favorite electronics cleaner to get all the grease and anything else off of it. I'll do that over here in the sink. That also washed away any uh, 
uh, dust from uh, when I was sanding it off. So I'll put that right there. Now this is tricky because it's kind of recessed right here, but I think if I put enough epoxy in there, it'll hold it. Uh, it should hold it pretty good, and I'll, and I'll scuff this up too. I actually mixed my epoxy right here on top of my vise, and I'm um, scraping most of the old stuff off with this razor blade knife. I'm not too worried about it right now. And the epoxy I'll be using is some Permatex five minute epoxy. Now, it'll be more than five minutes because uh, I definitely are gonna to have to put a lot on there. So, and I like this because you don't have to pre-mix it. You just squirt out however much you think you'll need. I always back the, the syringe back up a little bit and it come with this nice cap to put back on there. That was pretty cool. Huh? Put it back up there. And I have, I normally have a piece of a clothes, clothes hanger up here to mix it. I don't see it, so I'll use this sacrificial screwdriver. And you just mix that epoxy up real good there. Get it all mixed in. And I'll come over here and I'll bring my, uh, so I can get it in the, in the focus here. I'll bring my kit in here and I'll put the epoxy on there as much as I can dab it on. I need to get some in the middle, but I definitely need to get on the edges because the edges is where it's going to uh, adhere to the, uh, the raw antenna is, uh, anything with wheels called it. Now this is probably going to make a mess when I stick it on there, but that's alright. Okay, so come back over here. Sorry to keep moving the camera on you guys. Alright, and I'll just set this right here. And center that as best I can get it. Like that. And I'll probably put a I'll probably put a clamp on it. Um, to hold it. I won't get one of those. I have some furniture style clamps, but I think I'll just use one of these C-clamps right here. And I'll just clamp that bad boy right there. Make sure it's still straight. Make sure that the that's still there. Clearing that. Alright. I wonder if I can get another clamp on there. Just one more. There's one more over here. Alright, well that's a five minute epoxy, but we'll probably let it sit for more than five minutes. Um, and uh, I will come back and report back to you guys once I get this thing adhered on here. And I'll get some, I'll get some antenna wire on it. And um, yeah, we'll see how it, how it actually functions with, with, um, with the uh, antenna, with the, uh, with the radiator on there. So, this is going to be a long video. I'm going to neck a lot of this down, so later on. Alright guys, so, here's the finished product. And um, you can see the bead of epoxy I got around the edge of this thing. It's, it's probably on there pretty good. I didn't try to pry it off, but there's not going to be any strain on this. So, I was going to show you how to wind this up. As you can see, I got I cut 29 feet of this um, this wire and uh, this wire is really small and it's got a really slippery jacket on it um, it's really good stuff I'll put a link to the description of where I bought this wire so you basically just figure eight okay let me, let me get this on this hand so you basically just figure eight this wire just like that and it doesn't twist I mean it just doesn't it's just like you would wind coax without making it twist up I can keep it keep us in frame and there we go and I've got the uh, strain relief holes as you can see the wires going through there it comes out and what I ended up doing was just um, stripping a bit of wire here uh, tinning it and running it through that that hole that's right there on that stud and tightening it down and on the other end that's going to be going up into the tree or the pole all I did was cut another piece of that ABS, right, and drill three holes in it, and I just weaved that wire through there, and that's that's some really good strain relief on that side too. And I drilled another hole here and just put this real tiny carabiner so I can clip it on to uh, whatever um, rope or line that I'm using to get it up over a tree, or if I'm using a pole or what have you. And it's really versatile. Now the LNR trail friendly antenna I have uses a very similar. Uh, technique right here. And this is where I copied it from actually. So they have just a little 
It's a it's a plastic. It's shaped like a bullet, um, and um, it's got the same three holes for weaving this through. It also makes it easy to trim, so you can trim a piece of this off and not have to saw it or anything else. It's really really convenient. I'm not sure how I'm going to completely stow this. I have um, I have some hook and loop that I can use. Um, yeah, there's a number of ways. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to uh, uh, stow this other, other than just rolling it up like that and leaving it as is. I mean, I have some hook and loop that I could um, wrap around right here. And um, I'm thinking about it with me. I got it's entirely too much of it. And, um, but yeah, I'm happy with it so far. Uh, I haven't tested it, obviously, but what is there to test? You know, the wire, the un, -un is good. That plastic is not going to make it operate any different. So yeah, I can trim this Velcro up right here. And there we go. Although I might just leave it that long. I mean, this might be a good idea to uh, for some kind of securing this to whatever uh, I'm, I'm at when I'm operating. So yeah, there it is. It's not that big. Fits in the palm of my hand. It's very light. I don't even know what it weighs. But so far, um, I'm liking the design. And uh, maybe I'll get out this weekend and uh, try it out. And if I do, I'll definitely... Um, get a video of that. Maybe I'll get a video of me making contacts with it because that'll be more believable, I guess. Alright, well that's it. Um, hope you all like this video. Um, if you got any questions on where I obtained any of this material, feel free to, to ask and I'll share as much information as I can. Uh, so this, this plastic came from work. It was from the scrap bin at work and I just brought a piece of it home. I might redo this at some point because I, you know, even though it's, it's unsightly how I didn't cut this properly, but that blade on that um, uh, scroll saw it'll roll on you a little bit and um, you really can't see if you're cutting it straight because it'll, it'll roll and you'll be cutting at an angle like this but that's just user error uh, uh, most of it is because I'm not a scroll saw person but anyway it turned out okay um, I think these could be a little bit more angled down not so much pointed up like this one is because uh, I kind of messed this side up too and it was barely enough for that 29 feet of wire but I didn't want to make it too big and bulky but anyway I'm happy with it guys later on